Hi, this is Cory, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to put space on a bird or whatever. I've been poking around the internet and I found a number of artists who do either street or larger space themed art. So I can try using their techniques on a smaller scale in a way that's easy to recreate. I notice everyone seems to use really cool custom stencils or literal garbage. I'm going to make something somewhere in the middle that I can use for making clouds, planets, and stars. A dark background seems essential, but instead of spraying black all over the place, I use this as a chance to practice with my stencil in a way that I know will be covered up eventually. I wanted to find a way to make clouds, at least without an airbrush, so I used this process from Lanchin Designs as inspiration. I tried to do kind of my own thing, but honestly, I probably shouldn't have. Uh, this soft brushing technique of hers is probably the easiest, nice result that I was able to find. So I think the biggest mistake I made is starting with the edges of where the clouds are. I should have started tapping out the shapes like my inspiration does, then highlighted the edges later and made those highlights much smaller um, than I do here. But, you know, it is what it is. I ended up with a result that isn't bad, but it's definitely different than what I was going for. Um, something to try next time. I added too much shadow, so I ended up just using an airbrush to dial that back a bit with the mid-tone. I wanted to try an airbrush for the next color, so I used a tutorial from Airbrush Asylum to guide me. Things start a little bit rough, including me trying to use yellow over a background that is way too dark, but by the end of things I think I get a handle on it. Another thing that I've learned about stencils while doing this is the stencil I cut out would be much more appropriate for flames. Uh, next time I do a cosmos kind of thing, I'm going to cut out the waves to be much more horizontal. Going forward, anytime I add clouds with any airbrush, I'm always going to start off with white ink like I'm doing here. It always just goes so much smoother.
This isn't from a particular tutorial, but I didn't want to go making a huge mess by flicking a toothbrush just to make stars. So it turns out that if you can accidentally clog up your airbrush sometimes, doing it on purpose is even easier. This spray and peel technique is probably one of the most common ones in space-themed street art. John Barber art has some really great tutorials, and I try to recreate his work on a smaller scale just using an airbrush instead of spray paint. Before I try the peeling technique, I get the bright idea to spray through cotton, uh, which is like what you do to make marble texture. Okay, so this didn't really work out that great and I need to touch it up with a brush. Uh, but I think the general idea is sound, I just maybe need to try it again. One thing he does that I need to try next time is cut up little templates to airbrush texture directly onto the planet. Look how easy that looks. Definitely gotta do that next time. I'm going to be trying to make a planet that's burning up. So two things that I found is that doing this on a heavily textured surface, like these feathers, makes everything harder. Also, this technique initially looks really, really bad. Um, on this size of scale, I think is the issue, but um, it actually looks great once the light and shadow finishing touches get added. So it's more of a trust the process kind of thing. I didn't airbrush my layers on thick enough, so next I tried manually painting a layer on to peel off with just straight paint out of the bottle. Although it looks kind of messy initially, I think this might be the better approach. This pass to add atmosphere worked out, but it's definitely a less is more situation. And I had to correct where I overdid it a little bit. The burning planet was way more fun. I did the same as the atmosphere, but added some flame tails, then just worked in some yellow and then nearly white highlights. The twinkling star technique is great. I tried mixing it up with a template instead of tape to avoid a varnishing step. Um, I also only did four points of light, but I guess in photos there's usually eight. Uh, probably should have started off with more yellow color as well. As you see here, I need to go back in and touch it up a bit. So if I did it again, I'd start off with a uh, quite yellow and then just work up to a white in the middle. So this is how mine looks after all of the screw ups and experimenting and I think it looks good. 
not many of these techniques were that technically demanding. Um, I think it's pretty approachable, so just imagine how good yours is going to look once you give it a try. Good luck!